poverty made me a creative. But it's been technology that has helped me come out of poverty and necessity. But see, I wasn't always the tech type. I used to hate the internet. I used to hate social media. Believe it or not, I even hated Drake. Nowadays, I'm like, Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? Say you never, ever leave from beside me. <laughs> well, my transition started about 10 years ago when the iPhone 3G came out. I was an 11th grade Spanish student, I mean teacher, and I couldn't get one student to look up to me. So you know what? I did what any great teacher would do. I was like, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. So I went and got an iPhone. The students taught me how to use it, and the rest is now history. I began to see academics and education from a different perspective. Instead of just pushing papers and pencil, I realized that academics needs to be an experience, and not just any experience, but a multi-sensory experience by which they can take the information in through their senses and express it in the same manner. But I can't continue this talk without talking about some of the negative effects that technology has had on our society. For example, I only know my own phone number. I can't remember the rest. And I cannot get around without my GPS. Digital dementia is real, as the research suggests. So what do we do? Do we just give in? Or do we tuck away all our tech? Nah. From consumer to creator, that is where the brilliance lies. Supplementing the lack of basic usage with five steps to a creative mind. Step one, mindfulness. When I had self-esteem issues as a child, my mom would ask me one question. Who are you? I would respond, Frankie Bonilla. Who are you? Frankie Bonilla. Who are you? Frankie Bonilla. Through the constant repetition of my name, I learned who I really was. And I began to believe that I can achieve anything that I set my mind to. See, the mind is truly malleable. Neuroplasticity is real. Speak it, believe it, and you will receive it. Step two, movement. Daniel Wolpert states that the brain has evolved, not for thought and ideologies, but for movement. And this may help allow us to understand the correlation between Fortune 500 leaders who were diagnosed with ADHD as children, yet are leading in their respective industries. A multitude of university tests and research shows that even with 10 minutes of us walking around pacing, there's a neurological explosion in our minds. A moving body houses a genius mind. Step three, play. Albert Einstein famously said that if you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. Today's fairy tales are games in which we can be heroes. Not only are we heroes, but we're able to make mistakes in a controlled environment over and over again. And most importantly, we face our greatest nemesis our own personal best. See, games allow us to tell the narrative that we want to tell. Step four is to create. See, I learned creativity out of necessity. My mom would buy our fabric and would sew our clothes and then go to the secondhand store, take the tags off, put them in our clothes just so that I wouldn't get bullied. But see, I don't live in a state of necessity anymore. I look pretty nice over here, don't I, right? <laughs> so 
what I do now is I take 20 minutes every day for unnecessary creativity in which I take 10 specific people or things that I admire and I try to recreate them all together in my own way. Because, see, creativity is not some fairy dust or something that some of us are born with, with that juice. Creativity is something that if we continue to practice it and harness it, we can master it. Step five, reflect. See, we are obsessed with reflections. I know I am. I always look at myself in the mirror and make sure my eyebrows are good, my beard is shaped up, my curls are laying the right way. We constantly do that every single day to make sure everything matches and is well put together. But in the same manner with creativity, it's necessary for us to reflect in our process. What worked? What didn't work? What do I need to unlearn? And what do I need to learn to start this process all over again? See, when I think of this generation and how they have hurt or harmed our society, I'm reminded of one of my favorite students, Mr. Nairi Poole. Several years back, I caught Nairi watching people play video games, and I was appalled. Our conversation was something like this. What you doing, Nairi? You watching video games? You're not supposed to watch video games. You're supposed to play them. Mr. B, did you catch the game last night? Yeah. Why? Did you play in it? No. It's the same thing, Mr. B. And he went back to watching his favorite player play his favorite game. As the author of the book of Ecclesiastes says, there is nothing new under the sun. A couple weeks back, we took off the training wheels from my son's bike, and he was ready. I pushed him. He was going crazy. But when it came time to stop or to turn, he just kept falling. Boom, 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 boom. After four times, I just went up to him. I was like, Zeke, what's up? What's going on? He was like, Daddy, when I feel like I can't stop or turn, I just give up and let go. And then he falls. So as the bike lay there on the ground, I began to speak to it. And I said, stop when he needs you to stop. Turn when he needs you to turn. My son looked at me and said, Daddy, it's not alive. It's not going to respond to you. It only does what I make it do. Perfect. See, the hierarchy between these devices and us is evident. I wasn't created for it. It was created for me. From consumer to creator, that is where the brilliance lies. Supplementing the lack of basic usage that leads to digital dimension with a creative mind. See, this summer, I struggled a little bit financially. So, I started Ubering on the side. I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, so we always need more money. And through this app, I found customers, it showed me where to take them, and it put money right in my bank. But it's not about money. It's about time. It's about creativity. It's about a quality of life. I can listen to my favorite book while I'm prepping dinner for my sons or while I'm running on the treadmill in the morning. I can Zoom a conference from my dining room, my living room, or my basement. Shoot, I can create a beat on GarageBand, record them lyrics, shoot a video on iMovie, upload it into YouTube, all from the palm of my hands. See, 
When we breathe in, we inhale oxygen that was created by plants through photosynthesis. When we exhale, we create carbon dioxide, which they take in. That is the natural process of life. Every time that we consume, it is an opportunity to create. From consumer to creator, that is where the brilliance lies. See, the problem is that the solution is within the problem. We've been marketed this device as an iPhone, something that I use for consumption and entertainment. But in reality, it has turned into a device by which I can create. So today, I urge you all to breathe life into your dreams, to come out of poverty, to challenge your minds, to begin to create the world that you want to see and what you want to project right from the palm of your hands. Thank you.